Hello, so this potentially is the last episode in our 13 week series or 13 episode series on Christian meditation, prayer of the heart. It's been quite an amazing, uh, a, a quite amazing experience for me and I think for all of us who have shared this, this series for the first time on Trinity TV and in Trinidad and actually for the first time for the World Community for Christian Meditation that a television program has had this opportunity, well we've had the opportunity on a television program to spread meditation practice. We sort of start ending where we began in terms of um, these episodes with an, in, um, doing an interview today with and my guests are Sister Ruth Montrichard and Judy McSween which is basically where we began although we also had Susan Dowdy the first time who's a shadow our shadow leadership but this is the primary leadership community for Trinidad and now for the Caribbean and I am part of that group uh, Sister Ruth is the national coordinator for Trinidad she is also the national coordinator for the Caribbean and if, for those who know her otherwise, she is the chairman of Suval in Trinidad and Tobago. Judy McSween is, um, well, I always have to look at this so I say the right words. So um, professionally, um, an organizational development facilitator. Judy leads the, um, the meditation group at Church of the Nativity Church in, uh, in, uh, in Crystal Stream at that church, which is also part of a cluster with St. Anthony's Church in Diego Martin here in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have a few things we want to share with you and discuss uh, that will give a little bit of background as to where we are at as a community here and in the region. Um, but we're going to begin by a little um, sharing the experience of a recent uh, workshop we attended, the three of us among another, among 22, I think of us, they were in Miami, in Florida, in the United States, um, just after Easter this year. The Essential Teaching Workshop is part of the World Community for Christian Meditation's School of Meditation. The School of, school of Meditation is a, a real and virtual school which allows meditators who are committed to the practice, who lead groups, and who are working toward the development of this community, a, an, an opportunity to deepen their understanding, deepen their, their appreciation of the tradition, deepen their own personal experience, and find an, new tools, new ways of um, virtually evangelizing through this practice. I'm going to, uh, you will see some slides and you'll see some of our experience there. And while both Sister Ruth and Judy give us a little bit of their interpretation of the experience. So let me begin with you, Sister. Tell a little bit about <laughs> what, um, what it is, where we went, why we went, and what happened. Would you? Well, yes, this came about because we felt that um, we have been sort of going our own merry way with the Christian meditation, just the three of us, four of us, and doing, well, wherever the Spirit led. And we felt that there were a number of meditators who we felt could get more involved in leadership. And to do that, we felt we needed to deepen our own practice. So with a lot of help from the United States, 10 of us from Trinidad and also from St. Vincent, Barbados, and there were other people there from Mexico and the States as well, but we were mainly concentrating on our Caribbean leaders. And of course, Bishop Jason Gordon, who is a patron of the Caribbean world community, he also took the time off to be with us so it, I think it was a very good experience. A, it brought us as a Caribbean people together. Um, it was the first time that we had met as a Caribbean group. And also it gave us the opportunity to see ourselves as part of a bigger community, a wider community, an international community. Um, and I think the, the kind of help that we got from the States they were almost like big brothers and sisters to this emerging group and, and they really they helped us financially to get there. Um, we stayed at the Morning Star Retreat Center which was a very beautiful and calming place and we were really very happy there for the weekend. Nobody wanted to go home at the end of it but it was a, a very 
um, calming, peaceful experience, I think, for all of us. Judy, what do you say? Well, the World Community for Christian Meditation provides a lot of support to the 200 countries who are members. And uh, part of it involves these teaching programs that they host, whether it's a day, a retreat weekend, etc. So the essential teaching workshop form part of that resource. I think for me, from the time I heard about it and recognized that all of us, we had a ten, like Sister Ruth said, 10 people from Trinidad. You had from St. Vincent, it was. St. Vincent, uh, Mexico was, we had Barbados. Mexico was considered part of the Caribbean U.S. coming together. Um, so you really, for me, for me, the excitement was all about really appreciating that this meditation is not something that happens singularly in Trinidad or singularly in the, in the Caribbean islands, but worldwide. Um, so the joy of meeting everybody in the airport and traveling together, I think the bonding began there. And then arriving there and seeing the other groups coming in from Mexico. We had a Mexican priest, a Mexican nun included in the mm -hmm. team. Um, in addition, we had our own Caribbean nuns besides Sister Ruth. We had Sister Ivy and Sister, Sister, Martha. Sister Martha accompanying us. And, you know, so there, there was a sort of like a growth, a, a, an organic growth taking place as we moved from Trinidad to the U.S. to the retreat center and everybody coming in and being united by this one focus, which was meditation. Um, you know, and, and just how things unfolded, you know, we all got there and um, we had our first meal together the first night and beginning to exchange, you know, our, our experiences with meditation. So all that, you know, the, the experience started there. Um, the Mexicans, quite a few of them didn't speak English, but that didn't hamper us. And certainly when we went into our first <laughs> meditation session, it just proved the universality and the, the unification of meditative practice. Mm -hmm. So, you know. say, all in all, it was a very good experience. And we got the opportunity to meet with Bishop Jason and to talk about how we saw together, the just the Caribbean group, mm -hmm. how we saw meditation being used and how we looked at the way forward. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that usually comes out of these deepening practices and these workshops is that people begin to feel called to share their experience. Mm -hmm. And that has happened in the last two weeks. One of the persons who went to the workshop has started a group in there are three of them who are the workshop they said we have to, to share this with other people and last week they started a new group in St. Joseph they meet at the convent in St. Joseph at 6 30 on a Thursday afternoon mm -hmm. and I am hoping to join them this week mm -hmm. to share share with them so that, that has happened, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot more of that I'm will just happen. Wrong. <coughs> I was looking up this morning, looking back at the website to prepare for this, and uh, I was um, reminded of this, the mission of the School of Meditation, which the Central mm -hmm. Workshop comes under as one of the stages, actually like stage three, I think, in the six stages mm -hmm. of development through the school. And the, the mission reads to communicate and nurture meditation as passed through the teaching of John Main in the Christian tradition in the spirit of serving the unity of all. And uh, I, I, it strikes me that those, that's what you both mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. that, uh, that what we were able to observe both within in our own inner journey, because these are always great experiences of deepening the practice for you individually, mm -hmm. And then collectively, and I thought particularly because of Mexico and the language, the language mm -hmm. provided this mm -hmm. obstacle and at the same time this incredible, mm -hmm. um, un yeah. we were able to overcome the obstacle yeah. by mm -hmm. penetrating yeah. right through yeah. it mm -hmm. with meditation practice yeah. because silence requires no language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, silence requires a dropping away of language yeah. and how in a way language can be an obstacle. Yeah. I just was so struck by that, and, and I agree with both of you that you come out, came out of it with such a greater sense of unity, like all the things you yeah, described, where yeah. it began, how it unfolded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the passing on of the tradition, as you say, it's yeah. such a fruit of it yeah. to have come back yeah. to having a new yeah. group. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, Michelle, and as you're chatting there, it dawned on me that our experience was very much um, analogous to, you know, the church has a, a methodology of during the, the year, you go through a certain uh, set of scripture readings. And mm -hmm. every year you hear the same yet, and every year you come away, you, you come away with something different. Mm -hmm. And so too, as we went through the essential weekend, it took us back to the foundation of, you know, where did meditation occur within the Christian, the whole Christian community? Where did it, where did it start? So we, we went back through that, spoke about the mystics, spoke about the scriptural references, went back to how do you meditate? And it's as they say, every time you go to meditate, it's really like beginning all over again. I mean, we, we went there and for me, it certainly wasn't, oh gosh, I'm hearing the same thing over again. I was hearing it with a different light. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a different light opening up over mm -hmm. the weekend. Mm -hmm. and, addition, and in addition to the, 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 the regular group meditation that we do when we sit in a room, we also had the opportunity to engage in meditative walks every single day. Mm -hmm as well as engage in daily mass, which allowed us then to do a sort of Lexio Divina then on the scriptural um, mm -hmm. readings for the day. Mm -hmm. So it was a truly yeah. contemplative experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I think the fact that we, we meditated, we had four meditations a day. We started some days six. it was six. Yeah, maybe yes. six. <laughs> but uh, you know, the fact that this group of people could sit together mm -hmm. in silence, there's mm -hmm. a power in that silence yeah, that power. was mm -hmm. very, very evident. I had my first experience of doing an overnight silence. Yes. And the thing is, there was so much coming to me out of the silence, you know, light bulbs going on in your head. And I was sharing a room with one of my, my close colleagues, as you know, Catherine. And I'm there, you know, really bursting to share to Catherine the revelations that were coming to me. And we had made this vow to be silent till breakfast the following day. Woo! <laughs> In, in religious time, you, call it, next you call it the grand silence. <laughs> grand we have a tradition <laughs> where after the night prayer, mm. you keep silent out of respect for everybody else and that they're silent mm -hmm. till after breakfast the next morning. Oh, gosh. But this was the first experience mm. of a lot of people yeah. keeping mm. silent. For that extended yeah. period. After that, you take a private room. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so there are things coming up. There's mm -hmm. exciting new developments for us in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know one of, one of the things I'm looking forward to tremendously, and of course been working on it with you for more than a year now, is Father Lawrence Freeman's visit to Trinidad later this mm -hmm. year. Father Lawrence first came here in 2012. Not first came here, last came here, mm -hmm. excuse me, in 2012, and comes again in November. 2014. Mm -hmm. So she said, would you like to just outline what's ahead in that? Yes, well, what's I remember coming, when he came in 2012 when he was leaving, he said, you know, maybe we should do a visit together in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And I said, he has to be crazy because at that point I had no contact with anybody in the Caribbean. And then little by little, windows and doors just opened. So he is coming again at the end of October and we are hoping during that time to have a public session on the Thursday. We will do some TV interviews with him, have a big public session. We're hoping at this point to get the conference center in Movie Town, and we will open it to the public, anybody who wants to, to come to that. Um, we, I don't think we're going to charge, but we will put some donation baskets and hope we get something to cover expenses. And then we are hoping also, uh, we're having meetings this week with the um, Catholic board and the catechetical team. And we think that we will probably get in the archbishop. I went to see the archbishop and he's very keen that he speaks to teachers because he would like us to roll this meditation into the 139 mm -hmm. primary Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to meet with teachers and parents and then children. So it's, a, it's going to be a long process. It's going to be a lot of work to do. But I feel strongly with all the crime and violence that we're dealing with in our society, I feel this Christian meditation is going to be a way through that. It's going to be, it's, I'm not saying it's the only answer, but I think it's going to be a large part of the answer. 
because the Dalai Lama himself has said, if we can teach each eight-year-old to meditate, there will be no violence in the world. Because as we hear from meditators, it brings a sense of who you are, it helps you to relate better with people. And the whole fact of education, I was reading something the other day that uh, when UNESCO had this big education conference, there are four pillars of education, to know, to do, to learn to live with each other, and to learn to be. And if, if we, we get children, we, we teach them to learn how to know and how to, to do, and we hope that we teach them to live with each other, but do we ever really teach them to be? And that really falls exactly into the, the last pillar of education, mm -hmm. which I think influences a child's life more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So if we could work with schools and children, I think we, it is a way that we can help to change society, mm -hmm. to change the world, to make our country more peaceful, less violent, give people a sense of themselves. Of course, you have to do other things as well. I'm not saying it's the only thing you do, but certainly it is something that we can do very specifically to change what is going on in our country now mm -hmm. and to make a positive difference. Mm -hmm. And very simply. Yeah. Yeah. And in addition, while Father Lawrence is here, we are going to be hosting a weekend retreat for meditators. Um, we're having that at this seminary. At um, Mount Benedict. That's correct. And that's going to be the first time that we're having something like that for the meditators. So they've been signing up very rapidly. We're almost full. And then Father Lawrence, as Sister said, as we were starting, is going to take the opportunity to visit St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Barbados, where both Sister Ruth and I have been doing some outreach work to do some further um, talks there with the meditation community and of course those who are interested in meditation in those islands. So mm -hmm. he's going to be in the Caribbean for almost a week, yeah. just Ten over days, a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I certainly am, mm -hmm. yeah. in particular to the retreat, but I, I, I know that it will bear, mm -hmm. because after Father Lawrence's visit in 2012, a tremendous amount did. He ignited yes. his yeah. presence here among us, with mm -hmm. us, um, mm -hmm. What it just it, it, it started yeah. something Current. again. Or, yes. You know, it was he had been here before yeah. and you've yeah. been meditating for a very long yeah. time, sister and carrying this mm -hmm. torch for a long time. But there was some form of a renewal, wouldn't you say? Oh yes, yeah. definitely. It and took a spur to leap forward that mm -hmm. so we didn't even expect, yeah. you know. Yes. So maybe this would be yet another. Yeah. Correct. So as we go forward, um, what we are expecting, as you rightly say, is that continuation of what emanated during that first visit of in Father Lawrence. Yes. So the last um, visit. Mm -hmm. So that we're going to be essentially targeting at the, the bottom end of the age and the, the top end of the age. So recognizing, as Sister Ruth said, the, the impact of meditation on children, taking it into the primary schools, secondary schools, universities, um, because one of the things that the World Community of Meditation is actually doing now is they have a, a presence in, in it's Georgetown University, Georgetown sorry, University. where they work with the MBA students there. And apparently yes. the students say that's the best pro the guest yes, course that they yes, have. Yes. And, um, but recognizing that for us to effectively work with the students, the teachers have to be involved. And for the teachers to be involved, they need to be active meditators, mm -hmm. whether it's in their communities, whether it's in their homes, mm -hmm. etc. So we have a, a, a mandate, really, mm -hmm. to develop meditation group leaders mm -hmm. here in Trinidad and Tobago. So we are hoping that as Father Lawrence comes to Trinidad, we have a lot of participation in his talks mm -hmm. and we will be um, carrying on in terms of further training and development, similar to what we did um, over the last year or so mm -hmm. um, as a team, introducing them to, to, to meditation, where meditation began, the mystics, Casp um, Cassian, etc., scriptural references, and how to, to run a, a, a Christian meditation yeah. group. You remember one of the books that we got during the Essential Teaching Workshop yes, it. was how to share the gift. So we, there's actually a how-to mm -hmm. um, for the, the potential the meditation group. 
when you leaders. take part in essential <clears throat> teaching workshop this is a gift yes everyone gets one of these yeah but it's a tremendous resource it is. Yes. for uh, for all the things that you just referred to mm -hmm. and um, a great gift to us mm -hmm. yes but i sister ruth teases me and calls me the practice but I would be remiss if I did not end this series, which we're not quite there yet, but we have a few more minutes, mm. by, um, well, we've looked back, historically, we've looked at the tradition over the series, we've looked at the involvement and where we stand at this point in Trinidad, in the region, and, um, and all the things that are potentially mm -hmm. coming, including even the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Didn't yes, that come I up have as well? actually, when um, Bishop Jason went, he was going from that essential teaching workshop almost immediately to a meeting of bishops. And when he, 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 we had little booklets, so we gave him one. We said, give one to each bishop, which he did. And he said, one particular bishop, um, the Archbishop Pinder in the Bahamas, he said, I want it in my diocese straight away. So we're trying to negotiate now mm. to see how we can follow that up. The Bahamas is a little way away. Yeah. But, um, but you, we're thinking we are of hoping support from the US. Bahamas. Um, uh, people from Grenada have asked about it. Um, Dominica. Dominica has yes. asked. So we have a lot of work ahead, but we need to train leaders because we can't do everything. So, yeah. And which takes me back to know. where I was with the practice, yeah. that leaders come out of a commitment to the practice. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. the first step is to become a meditator, mm -hmm. this, uh, to become a committed meditator. Yeah. And then potentially, like mm -hmm. we've seen even out of the mm -hmm. Essential Teaching Workshop, we've seen committed meditators convert that's the right word, into yeah. leadership. Yes. Uh, and so to go back to the practice, I, I always um, go back to um, John Main's words that don't read about it, this is meditation. Don't read about it, don't think about Do it. it. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, don't um, listen to other people's experiences, sit. And the Buddhists uh, always say sit and, and every time you sit, like you're saying, every time you begin to meditate, it's, it's the beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Buddhists say every time you sit, you begin again. Uh, I think it's very important that we, um, well, we can't emphasize enough that as much as we can share our experience, as much as other people who have come on the program can share theirs, as much as we have all these resources where people share their experiences in, in all the areas, that, that this is about the practice of meditation, that that's why we have the groups, that's why we have taken this step into this program to share that ultimately what, what we are here doing is encouraging people to sit and to practice meditation uh, it's very simple. It requires absolutely nothing. No props, no music, no specific room or space. It just requires you and your commitment to sit quietly, to sit still. In the posture that we recommend, to use the mantra, that is our tradition, and to devote <coughs> 20 minutes, potentially, as a daily practice, every morning and every evening. It it's a journey to achieve that. I've been meditating for 10 years, and I still don't meditate every morning and every evening consistently over seven days. It is a long journey before you get that framework. But everything that we've shared, it testifies and is an outgrowth of that mm -hmm. essential experience of meditation. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. And it's a silent transformation of your life. You begin to, f to see yourself looking at life differently, living life differently, spending money differently, looking at nature differently. There, there is a, a richness that, and a focus that comes into your life where you begin to see, and especially with the presence, uh, or the, the, the deeper recognition of the presence of God in you and in everybody else. It gives you a whole different perspective on life. And it's a quiet transformation, usually, you don't notice it happening to yourself, but the people that you live with will say there's something different. Something has happened. What has happened to you? And sometimes you say, well, <laughs> I don't know what has happened to me, but I know I, I am different, mm -hmm. you know? So I think and it's in the practice, but like everything else, you have to practice it to, to, to reap the, the fruits. fruits and to be transformed. <coughs> mm -hmm. If you want to be transformed, you meditate. And if you don't, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Simple as that. You agree, Judy? 
A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I, people say to me that, you know, there is this peace about you. Um, and I just tell them I meditate, you know. And it's really, a, it, it, the joy comes from the recognition on, and the relationship with the Holy Spirit within you. So that um, there's no need for me to seek joy on the outside. I can seek joy on the inside. Mm -hmm. I'm just going back to this quote that I also read this morning. And it's also out of the, uh, out of the essential teaching workshop that it's a residential experience that helps us undertake, understand sorry, our own experience in the light of a greater tradition as well as through others with whom we share the journey. Yeah. At the end of the day, um, that's the essential teaching workshop. That is meditation practice. That is what it's all about. It's it's okay. really how we how we deepen our our own our own journey through this practice, mm -hmm. and as a result, you know how we share share the journey with others. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to run through quickly where you can and invite you who have followed this with us. I'd really be ha very very happy to say that. Uh, we have actually seen new meditators join the groups through this program. Uh, the one that I lead, Head Living Water Community, on behalf of Dow. Uh, I think we've seen five new meditators join. You've seen new meditators, yes. Judy. Mm -hmm. Other groups have. Yeah. And Sister Ruth as well. And yeah. Sister has as well. And so um, that's been a wonderful thing. So let me just review quickly where you can join these groups. It'll also come up at the end of the program on the screen. Monday here at Living Water Community at 9 o'clock in the morning and in the evening with Judy and her group at Crystal Stream Church of the Nativity at 7 p.m. Tuesday in Gittins Avenue with Sister Ruth. Wednesday in Barataria at St. Teresa's Church at 5 p.m. Thursday a new group begins at St. Joseph's Convent St. Joseph at 6.30 p.m. And then there's a group meeting in Belmont every second and fourth Saturday and in QREP at Holy Saviour Church every second and fourth Thursday. All of this information you will see scroll up on the screen as we close this program today. And uh, I thank you for being a, a, a very receptive audience. I thank you for the people who have come to the, come into the groups through this program. A wonderful thing that we've been told, we're closing out now, is that the series will rerun every weekday <coughs> continuously starting in September. So we close this in very, with great thanks to Trinity TV, to our um, producer Lisa Bajan and to the entire crew and for giving in this opportunity. Let's close as we always do with meditation. I invite you to join us. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to the silent presence of the spirit of your son. Lead us into that mysterious silence where your love is revealed to all who call. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus.